And we are live. Welcome into the arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast morning show for Friday, November 18th, 2022. I'm your host, Xpad, along with my co-host. Who, who, who is this? <laughs> it's Burley. supposed to be Burley of Burleyman Gaming, but it's Bur he's Burley son. Burley, Burley son. Okay, yeah, no, no, I don't think so. Not with me, Burley. No, <laughs> <laughs> you call me Song, right? Yeah, so Burley Coon is is your name, Burley Coon. So, <laughs> no, so you're dressed up as uh, Satoshi, yeah? Yes, yeah. Ash. Satoshi. Ash. <laughs> Satoshi. In Japan, we call him Satoshi, and of Satoshi. course, he was originated in Japan, so he is Satoshi. Yeah, so. but the Japanese market does it. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, happy Pokemon Day to all of you out there. Uh, of course, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet has released. And we're going to be talking about that. Boy, oh boy, are we going to be talking about that in this episode, Burley, of the morning yeah. show. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, what do we got in chat? We got something in chat already. Yeah, yeah. What do we got in uh, chat? One of my moderators, Z, saying hi, uh, morning. Hey, Z. Hey, Z. How you doing, man? Hope you're, yeah, doing, hope well. you're doing well. Yeah, it's been, been a while. So uh, welcome on in. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. So we've got uh, Pokemon. We're going to be talking about that later. Uh, Nakayuji out here in Japan. He's in some, uh, he's in some, uh, you know, uh, heavy, heavy duty stuff uh, when it comes to the law. We're going to be talking about that. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, uh, one of the consoles has gotten a price drop for the holiday season. We're going to be talking about that as well. And we'll give all of you a hint out there. Burley actually has this console. Okay. Yes. yes. So, yeah, don't pull it. Don't put it up and show it. Let everybody. Oh, God. God, no. <laughs> I, I have to go into my entertainment set. I'm too lazy for that, but we got a few things in chat. Z, yeah. I'm playing Pokemon, so don't spoil it. Trust me, it's not going to spoil anything. And morning, Dark Fairy. No, it, actually, it's not going to spoil it for it for you, Z, but it might depress you. <laughs> so when you, when you hear the news, we're going to talk about. So, but no, no spoilers. So don't worry about that. So yeah, yeah, it's Friday, man. Um, yeah, excited about the weekend. We're going to be talking, of course. Uh, you know wakanda forever tomorrow we're going to be doing that uh, episode we're going to be doing a regular episode of the arena multi-platform gaming news podcast where we're going to talk about of course the uh the game awards nominees and then we're going to talk about whether or not elden ring or god of war ragnarok is going to win game of the year <laughs> we're going to talk <laughs> about that and, uh as well as a bunch of other things so yeah we're we're excited you know, uh, for the weekend, you know, Burley, you're going to be playing Pokemon. I'll be playing God of War Ragnarok still, and as well as, uh, uh, you know, a Plague Tale Requiem. So, uh, yeah, a lot of stuff going on. It's almost uh, Thanksgiving in America. So for all of you out there in the U.S., all of my my fellow country people out there in the U.S., uh, I wish you all a, a happy Thanksgiving coming up soon. I know some, some of you are going to be taking time off to go visit family members and stuff like that. So... Yeah, it's coming soon, and the the temperatures starting to drop. And uh, out there where you are, Burley, there was a, there was some snow, right? Oh yeah, we've had some snow. It's uh, currently this morning it was minus five. Wow, minus five. Yeah. Oh, that's I wonder, nothing. I wonder what I'll, the I'll take I'll I'll take minus five over minus twenty, minus thirty. Yeah, I wonder what the temperature is in Vancouver because my my daughter's out there in Vancouver. I wonder if it's starting to snow over there on the west side. But uh, oh, I, maybe I, I not think... yet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Burley. I was gonna say I would, I, I wouldn't be surprised to start still. It's one deg one degrees out there. <laughs> All right, so yeah, so she's uh, she's probably feeling the cold cold air now. So that's a good thing. And yep. Z in the, in the chat. Yeah. If that's if the in that case, I'm leaving. Don't leave. Trust me, Z. Just trust me. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah. Have some fun with us, Z. It's it's Friday. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're going to get to, uh, of course, our first story right after Burley flies the drone. So he's got to get the uh, the controller. He's got to figure... Oh, there it is. Man, you've got it already. It's yeah, like... You, you think, yeah, you're all prepared today, man. Of course, you're you're prepared as Satoshi, you know, so... Ash. <laughs> Satoshi. All right. <laughs> so we'll be back right after this. Okay. 
All right, Nakayuji, legendary sonic designer arrested in Japan. Uh, so, I mean, this story basically is about insider trading. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and give uh, some of you the background of this story. So uh, for all of you video viewers here on the Arena Productions, of course, the, the story from Kotaku is here. So, uh, yeah, over the past 24 hours number of people here in Japan, including a Square Enix employee, have been arrested on insider trading charges related to a Dragon Quest game announcement. Legendary Sega designer Yuji, uh, Naka Yuji is reportedly among them. So it goes on to say, the scandal centers around a studio called Aiming, which in 2020 was announced as the developer of a new Dragon Quest game called Taft. So last night, it was first alleged that 38-year-old Square Enix employee uh, Sasaki Taisuke who has worked on Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts games, knew of the deal before it was publicly announced, and along with a friend purchased a ton of shares in iMing, hoping to profit when their share price presumably went up. It goes on to say uh, Nakasang, 57, who is credited as one of the main care, uh, creators of Sonic the Hedgehog and who has also worked on everything from Knights into Dreams to Fantasy Star, has been arrested on similar charges, according to the, uh, the FNN report. Naka is accused of also knowing about the Iming deal before it was public news and taking the opportunity to purchase 10,000 shares in the company. While most famous for his work with Sega, Naka had most recently teamed up with Square Enix on the ill-fated 3D platformer Balen Wonderworld, or Wonderland, I'm sorry, Balen Wonderland. He parted yeah. ways with the company in April 2021, these allegations stem from 2020, when he was still working with the publisher. Naka was arrested by the Tokyo District Public Prosecutor's Office, which is continuing its investigation. Naka is alleged to have purchased 10,000 shares worth 2.8 million yen, or around 20,000 US dollars. Uh, Sasaki, meanwhile, is accused of buying 26.4 million yen worth, or around 188,000 US dollars. Authorities have yet to disclose whether any of the three men arrested so far still owed, uh, owned those shares or whether they had been sold off for profit prior to the investigation. Yeah, uh, the Japanese officials out here, they don't fool around with stuff like that, you know, with insider trading and these type of white collar crimes. So uh, I don't know, man. What do you think, Burley? Well, I, I think he's uh, he's like... You Americans, you don't know how to do this. I will show you how to do this. <laughs> like, like, are, are, are you, are you, are you, like, what is gone in your mind you think that this is good, you're going to get away with this? Like, how stupid can you be? But then again, this is the guy that gave us Balan Wonderland. Yeah. So, Yuji Daka has not been in gamers good graces of a long time i don't think he's really helped with a good game for a long time yeah. so it's like i don't like yeah the whole just like let's do insider training to just try and see if we can make a shit ton of cash yeah because dra dragon quest is huge especially over there in japan so yes. when this developer announces and the game goes well and all that we can make a buttload of cash it's like yeah. yeah, you can make that buttload of cash, but you got to remember there's insider trading, all this and that. Yeah. And you get caught with this. You're yeah. like, I, from what I know, Japan's not so lenient on this. They're going to really prosecute against you. They'll prosecute him, but he'll have to pay a heavy fine. He probably won't go to prison, though. No. I mean, you know, the, the, he'll 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 have to fork out a ton of money, you know, as well as give up those shares. You know, if but, he still uh, has them, if he still has them, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah it doesn't and look I bet, good. I bet you yeah. the, the other guy that they got flipped mm -hmm. on him immediately and said, Okay, will you cut me some kind of deal? I, I can name other people that did this and that were pushing for this. Yeah, it's possible. We'll probably hear more about it later. If I hear anything else here on the Japanese news, I'll let all of you out there know, but uh, yes. yeah, I mean, uh, yep. it's that's uh, bad news for him especially uh for his career moving forward uh it's gonna be a pretty big black stain on him so, well I, th I i think it's the end of his career could be really because 
Yeah. He if his age, he he and second do not get along. And after Balloon Wonder World, that pretty much killed the relationship with him and Square. Yeah. This just overkills it. So yeah. he's pissed off. Like Nintendo is not going to touch this guy. They they were like they like if he ever applied for Nintendo, they just look at his resume and look at him and be like, Nani. And just yeah, I mean, he could he could go independent, but yeah, it's it's tough. But it's no, tough, no, especially no one, with no all one, the competition. So. Well, with no, all the younger all, competition out there. So. With all, with all the competition out there and better better developers out there, and it's like with all these black stains, it's like yeah, this this guy has no chance. Yeah. Well, anyway, so that was one of the big stories today. So next up, we're going to talk about that console that got the price drop. We're going to talk about that right after this, so stay tuned. So Burla, your Series S is getting a price drop for the holidays. Ooh. Yeah. Two hundred forty-nine dollars now. That so pro- uh, this is from The Verge. Uh, so uh, I'll go ahead and drop the link down there for for all of you v- uh, video viewers. So Microsoft drops the Xbox Series S price to two forty-nine for the holidays. So yeah, uh, promotional pricing for Microsoft's smallest Xbox starts today as part of a Black Friday offer. Deals extend to select Surface Laptop Five and Surface Pro Nine models and more. So Microsoft uh, throwing a lot of. Uh, sales into the black holiday uh black black friday holiday hat yeah so the new promotional price starts today yeah and uh includes special holiday themed packaging it's part of a series of black friday deals so from microsoft that includes up to 300 dollars off the new surface laptop 5 200 dollars off it's like surface pro 9 models like i uh, just said and 67 percent off xbox digital games so yeah they're they're uh, really going out while well, we saw the Xbox Series S drop as low as two forty nine in a limited offer that lasted just hours at uh, Woot earlier this year, Microsoft's official promotional means, Best Buy, the Microsoft Store, and other retailers will all be offering the console at this promotional price. Target is even bundling a $50 gift card with its own Xbox Series S deal. Mm. So Microsoft Gaming CEO Phil Spencer hinted at holiday deals for the Xbox Series S in a recent Decoder podcast. Quote, during the holidays, you might see some price promotions, end quote, said Spencer. It's not clear exactly how long the Xbox Series S will remain at the $249.99 promotional price. Though. But anyway, Burley, what do you think of this? And how does this affect uh, the forecast for consoles during the holiday shopping season? Well, uh, first thing we got Dark Fairy in the chat saying, "Oh, that's awesome!" Yeah, hey, Dark Fairy. I agree. Hey. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, what that means is, oh, uh, Microsoft is going to get the money, <laughs> the monopoly all that, money, all that fake monopoly money you got in your hand there. <laughs> yeah, it's a little thing for my channel, so it, it makes good effect here. Like this is going to really help push the sales on this. Yeah. Because people that hey, you want a next gen console, you can get in at 249 US and yeah. just get in at a cheap price and game pass and all that. Yeah. It, it's a great it's a great move for them to just because there are people that they'll be like, Oh, I can just buy this and buy a thing at Game Pass for a dollar. There yeah. we go. I'm set. I'm set yeah. for the holidays for yeah. December. It's like yeah. or just set now to buy it and I'm I'm good to play for a while. Dark, Dark Fairy's slow makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is really going to help push this thing to sell a lot. Because, uh, as you know, inflation and all that is all at an all-time high and all that. Right. I think this is just going to help make it easy. And I, I, I love my little S, my Series S. Yeah. Like, I, di- I didn't buy the X. I bought the S because it was like, I'm going to, I'm not going to be buying disc-based games. I'm just going to be Game Pass on this. Or for the few ever games I do buy, it'll be digital. It's all just download quick. You know, I the last time I was in Yodobashi, which is my local mm-hmm. electronic store here in Japan, I saw a couple of high school kids uh, 
over at that you know the corner area where the microsoft you know the the xbox displays are and everything and they have like a little cardboard you know like uh dimensional cardboard displays of like the the series x the series s you know so you could see you know what you know dimensionally what it looks like and how it would look if you your- had to put it in your you know your entertainment center or whatever and these high school kids you know, they took they took the cardboard thing and then they took their backpacks because, you know, they're they're coming from school and stuff. And they opened their backpack and they put the, the Series S cardboard in the backpack to see how it would fit in their backpack. Right on. Where, you know, and uh, yeah, and I mean, that's the thing. Like we were talking about on last week's episode of the podcast. I mean, that that console is the perfect dimensions for you know the japanese consumer that wants you know a relatively inexpensive console you know that that they want to get back into console gaming and all you know and it's relatively small enough to carry around if they wanted to oh oh yeah well it's uh well it's just great for not just even the japanese market in north america anywhere it's just like you can easily fit this on any entertainment stand yeah. and it is they could just go a lot of places was, it, that's the funny thing of having this small thing in Japan, having the display kind of thing out there. Yeah. Because yeah. here in North America, if they had one of that and someone was trying to put it in their backpack just to see if it would fit, yeah, you'd have five malls like security guards try to tackle them and jump them because yeah, well, people because yeah. because they'd be like they're trying to steal the promotional <laughs> thing. Yeah. Not you know show. A... Yeah. Well, that's why they're card. They're made of cardboard. These little promotional displays. Oh you know, yeah, but but so, like oh, yeah. over here, I've had it in my own thing where I picked up a cardboard <laughs> display of something. Yeah. I had security guy co- like one of the employees go like, "Sir, you need to put that down." I'm like, I was just trying to feel it, and so I get an idea of the side. Sir, it's only for a visual reputation. You cannot touch it. I'm like, oh my god. I literally, I just walked out of the store. I said, "You lost my business." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> Well, anyway, so two forty nine ninety nine. So uh, if you're thinking of getting a, an Xbox, you know, if you're thinking of getting one of the series, uh, the S, uh, and you want get something the S, that's it's better quite... than the X. Oh no! It's, well, th- there's the yeah, that's an, that's another that's another argument <laughs> for another day. But I mean, if you're looking for a, a an inexpensive console, I mean, at two forty nine, I think that that it's a great bargain. So uh, yeah, these Black Friday deals. You know they're they're coming so uh yeah take advantage of them all right so next up the our topic of the show a final uh final topic for the this edition of the morning show pokemon 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 bugs bugs crashes crashes right after this Boy, oh boy, Burly! Pokemon oh, Scarlet. Oh God, that image you had to crap. <laughs> Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are full of glaring technical problems, and yeah, boy, oh boy! I mean, from what the reviewers are saying, this is the worst of the worst. Man, Ooh. oh man! So anyway, I will give you, of course, uh, all of you video viewers, the uh, the, of course, the link to the IGN story here. So. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm going to read a little bit of this for you, so uh, bear with me here. So Pokemon Scarlet, this is from Rebecca Valentine over at IGN. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's review embargo has lifted and as as it takes over to November 18th around the world, which we are now in, folks are beginning to get access to them like uh, Mr. Satoshi here in the morning show, which means everyone is now able to see an extremely unfortunate glaring issue with the games. They run very, very poorly. So we covered this in our review in progress on IGN, of course they did, and there's a lot more to the game that we can discuss. But here's a quick excerpt summarizing the issues that uh, were ran into. The frame rate is all over the place, dipping agonizingly low, even when only a few effects such as flowing water or weather are on screen. Character models only a few feet away pop in and out, sometimes rapidly or chug along at stop motion animation speeds. 
Everything has a weird, shimmery blur to it, <laughs> and shadows frequently disappear and reappear suddenly and illogically. Pokemon clip in and out of walls or floors at odd angles, or get stuck in them entirely. So this person uh, reviewing spent an entire gym battle with one Pokemon halfway buried in the floor. Oh, good. The camera will occasionally clip through mountain sides and give a full view of a video gamey void, sometimes ruining cool moments, like for instance the evolution of a uh, of a Whopper, a Whooper. I, I, Whooper. I don't know. Whooper. Whooper. Okay. okay. Everything lags all the time, from battles to menus to cutscenes. Two of the guide's riders experienced hard game crashes. It is by far the worst running Pokemon game that they have ever played and among the worst running AAA games ever played on the Switch so far. And yes, this is with the day one patch. Burley, your thoughts? Yeah, this is kind of not as surprising because if you've played the last couple of Pokemon games, they haven't run the greatest. The, the, but... I haven't I haven't yet to try it yet, so we'll wait and see. I know there's a whole thing, the whole internet and Twitter's on fire with this being like, wow, they did it well with Xenoblade 3, it's to do with the engines and stuff. It's like uh Yeah. This this in my opinion, I still say they should have just waited. Like Arceus okay. was your Pokemon game for the year, but because they put that in January and they wanted to ha you gotta have a big game Nintendo for November. Yeah. They they put this one out this year. Yeah. I'm willing to see and try how it is, but the thing is, like some of these games have run slow on the past. Like Diamond and Pearl on the DS. Oh like it literally took you like a minute and a half to save the game. <laughs> but no no joke. Like Platinum fixed that a little, but like that was one of my issues with the original Diamond and Pearl. Yeah. You just sit there like save is like, okay, go put my DS down, have my drink, have a little bit of my sandwich or something. It's just like, uh, and then be like, oh, okay. No, wait, wait. Oh, okay. Now it's done. Now it's saved. It's like, <laughs> so I, I, I'm willing to sit it's like I have, I've seen little like thing of just showing that the frame rate's slow. Yeah. It, it is what it is. I'll, I'll yeah. wait till I play play it. Yeah, I'm really uh, interested to hear what you have to say about it when we do the the regular weekly podcast tomorrow. I'm, I'm really looking forward to hearing if some of the what they're saying is uh, you run into the same problems. So. Yeah. Well, this is this is the weird thing because like everyone was kind of hoping the Switch OLED was going to be an improvement, uh -huh. so you get like a little boost, like you know how they did with the 3ds and the new 3ds. Yeah. We had a little bit more RAM and a little bit better of a processor, so it did help a little. Yeah. So we were people were hoping on that. You didn't get that, and it's like, Ugh. yeah. But I, I I can only say too much, so much without playing it. But uh, yeah. I will I will give you guys my thoughts when I've sat down and played it. And I'll be doing that streaming in a few hours here. So. Yeah. Speaking of the bugs in the story, they were just, they're describing one area that was explored, refused to let me pick up any of the items lying around on the ground. I've seen multiple wild Pokemon stuck in walls, unable to be battled, and I've been able to briefly fly vertically up a waterfall. Alrighty. That's, that's actually kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool, but I mean, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. So anyway. Anyway. Hopefully that'll be patched up. There'll be several more patches to come. I would imagine oh, to yeah, get this no. get this fixed. But anyway. Oh, you, trust me, they, they they'll be working on this and patching patching the hell out of this. But we'll, oh, yeah. we'll wait. Like, here's the thing: you've got these people saying it. Who knows how much the mass majority are running into this? Yeah. Because there's so many factors. Yeah. That could be, and it's like. Well, I was all these issues all came on handheld mode when my switch was at twenty percent power, and it's like, right, okay, right. like like I'm not making excuses, but I'm just trying to. We, we got to start figuring out some things on this. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, it's all over Twitter, too. I mean, uh, some of the bugs, you know, uh, instances of bugs and everything, uh, people have been posting on Twitter and everything as well. But anyway, yeah, so that is, uh, yeah, that's this edition of the morning show. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, speaking of Twitter, Burley, it, it, <laughs> Twitter might be gone by the end of the weekend. Yeah, because I'm hearing there's like a mass a- exodus of people quitting, you know, because of what El- you know Elon Musk has been, you know, trying to force them into doing, and they're just like, nope, not gonna do it. So they're like walking out the door in mass, and it's like there's so many people walking out that there might not be enough engineers left to actually oversee Twitter. <laughs> so. Yeah, this this would be interesting. Yeah, you've got you've got people, but here's the thing: some of this. Oh, some of these people say like they're gonna do this, they're gonna do this. We, I like, I, I take it with a grain of salt, just because I've said, I've heard so many times people say, "I'm not gonna do this, I'm not gonna do this," but they still do it. So it'd be interesting to see what happens with Twitter. Yeah. If it goes, it goes. I'm not going to shed a twi- a tear if Twitter dies. Yeah. If it goes, it goes. That's. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway. So anyway, let us know in the comments what you think of uh, Pokemon Scarlet or Violet. If you're playing it, let us know if you've run into any problems with it or if it's running fine for you. Let us know in the comments as well. So uh, we'd really appreciate, you know, uh, any comments that you give to us. And of course, if you're new to our channel here, the Arena Productions, be sure to hit that like and the subscribe and the notification bell for when we drop a new episode of The Morning Show as well as all of our other content here on the Arena Productions. And we really appreciate all of your views and your support here for for what we do here on the Arena Productions. So thank you so much. Yeah, and of course, uh, other programming notes. Uh, Tomorrow we're going to be recording uh, episode 112 of the Arena Multi-Platform Gaming News Podcast. Uh, So stay tuned for that in audio and video format. Uh, the video uh, format, of course, will be here on the Arena Productions as well as on our Patreon and early access for a day. And then, of course, uh, we're also doing a Black Panther Wakanda Forever uh, discussion and uh, and review uh, afterwards. And so that will also go up uh, here on the Arena Productions. So stay tuned for that as well on our show called The Marvelous Marvel Discussion Arena. So, yeah. So uh, stay tuned for that. So I want to thank Z for coming in. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks so much. And, uh, Dark Fairy, thank you so much for coming in. We really appreciate, uh, you and, uh, everybody else that, uh, come in and, uh, watch us, uh, whether it's live or video on demand later on. Of course, I, I edit this and, uh, put it up into the, uh, the arena, uh, morning show, uh, playlist, you know, so you can check it out there as well, uh, later on. So we appreciate all of you that come and view our content here. So. All right, so that's going to do it for us. So stay tuned for all the content we got coming for you on the weekend. Oh, and one more thing, Burley, uh, about our extra take. Uh, Let everybody know what we're going to be doing right after we uh, finish recording the morning show here. Well, we got got, uh, Dark Fairy just saying, no worries. You guys have a good one. Thank you, Dark Fairy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you, Z, so much. Uh, But after this, uh, Expat and I will be recording Sonic Frontiers. We've got my footage on that. Yeah. So give you my thoughts on it. Yeah. So stay tuned for that in the yes, either on YouTube or Patreon. Yes, that uh, uh, the extra take ep- episode will go up to uh, Patreon and early access first, uh, and then it will once it goes public, you'll be able to watch it here on the Arena Productions. So, yes. All right. So thank you so much, and we hope to catch you for the next edition of the Morning Show on Monday. So I've been your host X Battle along with my co-host Burley Burleyman Gaming. We hope to catch you in the next one. So have a great day, everyone, and have a great weekend. Take care. Take care, everyone. Peace out.